Hi folks, this is Jason Moore here with mtgoacademy.com and this is one of just three remaining installments of Dime a Dozen here. I'm going to spare you the ridiculous intro tonight. Uh, it's possible I might bring that back for the last one or two installments. We'll have to wait and see. But for today, I definitely wanted to get in one last run with Desperate Ravings in this Is It Ravings Control Shell. Now, I played this a while back. I believe it was Dime a Dozen ni number 97. And I definitely wanted to give it one more spin. Had a lot of fun, some epic shenanigans last time around in a popper league. And I just really love the blue-red color combination. I love blue-red control, particularly in popper. It just has a lot of powerful stuff going for it. So I'm going to quickly, quickly run through this. Uh, just to give you a brief rundown of how this works. So the mana base is incredibly straightforward. We've got, first of all, 10 dual lands, the Swiftwater Cliffs and Is It Guild Gates in full force. And then we've got two fetch lands, a single Evolving Wilds and a single Terramorphic Expanse. These can be a little bit flexible here, thin out our deck just a tiny bit. Then we're going to be running eight... Island, so I've got a full 18 sources for my counter spells and my deprives. Getting the early double blue is critical here. And three mountains, which is going to total up to, I believe, <laughs> let me see if I can do my math here. It's 13, 13 red sources, uh, seems about right. And then a single haunted fen graph. We have room for one colorless land in the deck. And this guy is going to hopefully get us back one of our prowess creatures in Whirlwind Adept or Jeskai Sage. And even getting an Izzet Cronarch is not too bad. So basically I'm going to break this down to card draw, win conditions, permission, and removal. The card draw is four preordained, one of the best uh, one mana cantrips in the format. Certainly uh, maybe one of the best spells in the format period for accumulated knowledge incredibly explosive and powerful two mana draw and this deck plays with the graveyard a little bit because of ravings so the knowledges can get bolstered up by that interaction desperate ravings the card that came in through eternal masters is the whole reason for this deck existing and it's it's basically um a lot of graveyard flashback type spells so that when we discard randomly with ravings we actually get additional value. Jeskai Sage is one of our win conditions and one of our defensive guys but he also draws us a card here. The prowess is really easily triggered multiple multiple times with all of our cheap uh, spells and then our high amount of velocity which is basically the rate at which we're going to see extra cards in this deck. The rate at which we're going to be able to draw through our entire deck cheaply and casting multiple spells in a single turn. Deep Analysis, also part of that, adds on to the card advantage. And, uh, you know, kind of an underrated card, actually. The flashback cost of uh, paying two to draw an additional, an additional two cards is, is quite nice here. And then Cronarch, I count as a draw spell because he's going to draw us a card from the graveyard. He also gets in for a bit of damage. I think you'll see it in one of these games. He gets in for quite a bit of damage on his own. So there are those instances where that happens. Uh, what did I say next? I think I said Wind Conditions next. The only other Wind Condition is Whirlwind Adept. Now this is pretty unique. Uh, not many people playing this, but he pairs so well with the burn and again the velocity and the cheap cantrips. He gets huge. He's very hard to kill. He kills them fast. Obviously you pair him with burn and that's going to just maximize the efficiency of the burn and of the whirlwind adept. Speaking of burn, we've got a lot of ways to stop early creatures. Two firebolts, these also can get put in the graveyard with ravings. Four flame slash, four lightning bolt, a single harvest pyre, and this is a way to stop anything that gets out of the range of flame slash essentially. And then rolling thunder, another way to try and win the game. I guess I should have counted this as a win condition really. But it's also a board sweeper and uh, you can use it once as a sweeper, get it back, use it as your finisher. Lastly, the permission. This is a permission suite I've used in multiple decks and I think it's quite robust for this format. Uh, until proven otherwise, the four counter spells deprive as sort of a fifth counter spell, and then two copies of Dispel, which is a cheap way to interact with other permission and a lot of the tricks played by decks like Stompy and uh, and Is It Fiend and all of those kind of 
of weirdo decks. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, sideboard. Uh, pretty straightforward. Hydro Blast and Pyro Blast. Only two Pyro Blasts because we already have so much permission that it's hard to stuff your deck with any more against blue. But against burn, we do want to stuff our deck with as much permission as we possibly can, taking out uh, removal or expensive spells. Electricery to sweep the board. Nihil spell bombs to sweep the graveyard, but not our graveyard. Our graveyard gets pretty stacked, so we want to use the spell bomb just to target theirs. Curse of Chains for big, fat, fat creatures. Spreading Seas comes in against a lot of people. It comes in against Tron, Hexproof, Burn, and, and a couple other matchups as well. Echoing Truth, just in case we find tokens and the tokens get bigger than uh, Electricery can stop. I want to be able to stop a lot of those tokens. And then Curse of the Bloody Tome is going to come in against decks that can kill all of our threats. And so this is an unkillable win condition against a lot of people. Mostly Mono Black is, is the main culprit, the main target with this. They can kill everything with a bunch of Edicts and a million removal spells, but they can't kill Curse of the Bloody Tome, and they don't have enough creatures to stop all of our removal. So we basically, um, we either steal the game one, or they kill all our threats, and then in game two and three, the roles reverse, and we kill all their threats, and they're trying to beat us with creatures, and uh, we just wait it out and play the play the waiting game. All right, guys, we're going to play the Ravings game now, and that's all I have to say. Enjoy. <laughs> 